Okay, this is a very uh, brief description of how to sell real estate um, without having capital gains taxes. Now I'm talking about any of the 50 states. I'm sure you could do it in another country. It's gonna have to be a similar method. I'd have to look more closely at your different laws, but the reason why I'm doing this video is so you can see the general overview of how this works. So you can, you can, do, you can start now or you can um, start this when you're, you've already um, had an offer that you've accepted and there's a closing date. You can do this anytime before the closing date. In fact, you can even do this at, at the closing table. It's just a little more difficult because what you want to do is, I'm assuming that your the property is titled in your name individually and, and you're looking at the capital gains tax and you're going you're gonna to have a capital gains tax or at least reporting obligation. So <clears throat> before the actual sale, you want to assign the sales contract to a limited liability company. <clears throat> It's a quick claim deed. You already have one. That's how you got the title in the first place. So you would prepare a new quick claim deed, making yourself the grantor and the LLC the grantee. Here's the name of the LLC. You take the address, the street address of your property and put comma LLC. <clears throat> so for example, it would be 1123 Elm Street comma LLC. That is your LLC name. I don't need to register an LLC. Okay, once I have that, I got the address, which is gonna be obviously that same address, okay? And I'm gonna be the single member, the person whose name the property was in to start with. Um, if there's two people, you need both people to do this. And uh, you know, husband and wife, you would uh, name both people in this uh, quick claim deed. And then when you, when you apply for the EIN, you do need an EIN for this, and you can get one in two minutes. Um, only one person needs to apply for the EIN as if that one person is the single member of the LLC. Even though there's a husband and wife involved, only one person has to use his or her SSN in the application for the employer identification number. This does not create a new tax liability. So you would simply prepare a quick claim deed naming the LLC as the grantee, naming the title holders that are currently the title holders that would have the capital gains tax, you name those people as the grantors. The name of the LLC can be the address comma LLC, just the street address. It does not have to be registered in the state. Then you, um, you file the, you have to do this. You have to record it because if you don't, the closing agent can choose to ignore it, which is wrong, but then it's permanent. So the best way to do this is you assign the sales contract uh, or have it assigned to uh, the LLC. Then, or the, make it to where the seller is the LLC now. So whatever that looks like, okay? You should have a contract uh, naming yourselves as the, or yourself as the seller. So you're gonna trade it, you're gonna exchange it over, convey it over so that the LLC becomes the seller. So whatever that looks like, you have the right to do that. And lots of times you just wanna communicate with the buyer uh, just so uh, everyone's on the same page, the buyer shouldn't care who's selling them the property. Um, then you record the quit claim deed in the county. Now, uh, in some states, you're going to have um, a large uh, stamp tax, like Florida and California, for example. You want to fill out a form that goes with the quit claim deed. The county tax appraiser's office has it, or the county recorder's office has this. And this form basically identifies the transaction as a conveyance for estate planning purposes, and there will be no stamp tax, okay? It's exempt. That, in that situation, is an exemption, okay? Because you would otherwise have to uh, owe this tax. This is not a sale. When you transfer it from yourself to your own company, it's not a sale. It's a conveyance for estate planning purposes, okay? You can do that the day before the closing date. You can do it at the closing table, okay? Just before the closing, that's all. All right. Then, let's see, make sure I made, made some notes here. Okay. Then what'll happen is, now if the title company is gonna wire the funds to the LLC, you do need to go ahead and get a bank account. In order to get a bank account, you do have to register the company. You can register the company anywhere you want. Even if the address for the company that you used to get the EIN was the property address in whatever state, you can register that named company in any state you want using any address you want. You just wanna get it registered so a bank will open your account. So let's say, let's say you're in California 
you, you do this transaction, you do these documents like this, and then let's say they're going to wire the money. Or eventually, you're going to want to clear a check in a bank account. So the easiest way to do it is go to the Secretary of State's website and organize a New Mexico LLC using that name you just identified on the quick claim deed. Okay. Of course, I can do that for you. But I mean, you guys, you guys can figure this out. Um, that's what you do. You just register the company, then you go on the internet and you find a bank service that will open your account over the internet. And you could do that in the same day. You could do you do that very quickly. You do not need the bank account to close this transaction. You might need it for wiring funds or something, but you can actually have the funds wired a different way. You don't need the company registered. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I just want to say generally, I want to have this video just so generally um, you'll understand how this process works. Getting an EIN for the company that receives the money from the sale does not create a tax liability. This is why you can do this. You can choose the tax liability. Whereas if you get the money in your name, you really can't choose the tax liability. You're stuck with whatever you know, tax classification you have, whatever tax bracket you're in, you're stuck with it. But when you change the owner of the title and the owner of the contract and the right to sell the property, you move that right over to the LLC and it receives the money, well then it has a completely different tax treatment and you can decide what that's gonna be. All right, let's see if I wanna add anything else here. Yeah, so that'll do it. So um, try that out or give it some thought. Uh, hopefully this allows you to do some research. You can see how this works. Thanks for listening.